Hallelujah. Are you blessed to be in church? Can I have some more lights? I can't see everybody. Can you turn on? Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? On this side, you don't seem so excited. Seriously, are you people asleep today or is the weather or what's going on? All right. Well, it's time for the word and I'm happy to announce that daddy is back home in church today. And um, I know God has something to say to you. Amen. And it's time for the word of God. And it's time, you came here to hear from God, isn't it? You came here to be changed, isn't it? Oh, say yes, shout yes. Yeah. So it's time for God's word and I pray that God will open your heart to receive what he has for you. Amen. Please stand to your feet. I can see some of you still sitting now. Please stand up to your feet. And um, I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to open your heart and make sure that you are ready to receive what God has for you. So let's say now, last week, Sunday, Prophet was in Liberia, okay? How many of you watched, saw pictures, some form of update on, oh, okay, fantastic. And um, today we had, how many of you, your, your internet has not been working? Correct. I think it's one of the best things that has happened to Accra. Yeah, it's very, 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 very good. Uh, a lot of, you can't watch some things, a lot of things have Shut down. Uh -huh. So I think it's good for you. Amen. God is leading you on a fast. Eh? And um, so uh, we are not live streaming. So today is just you are blessed because you came. Amen. Nobody else is watching. It's just us because we can't live stream. So it's, tell your neighbor it's all for you today. Amen. So let's sing Nothing is Impossible. As we bring up prophet to bring us the word of God. Amen. Are you ready to sing? Lift your hands. Let's sing together. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. When you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible. It's impossible. When you're trusting in his word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone And rest upon His word For everything, oh everything Yes, everything is possible Come on, lifting up every hand one more time Let's sing, nothing is impossible It's impossible when you put your trust in God Nothing is impossible It's impossible When you're trusting in His word Hearken to the voice of God to thee Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone And rest upon His word For everything Oh, everything, yes, everything is possible with all the way from Liberia. Give the Lord a shout of praise as we welcome our pastor, Bishop Doug Heward Mills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for bringing us to this point and we thank you for the opportunity we have to share your word speak to our hearts in a special way we thank you for your great blessing and help in our lives i want everyone to just lift your hand and ask god to give you revelation he should reveal himself to you his word his spirit and change your life because this is an encounter with the Holy Spirit and you are going to have a great change and a great change in your life in this service. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you.
Father, we give you thanks for the spirit of revelation. Touch us in a special way. Let us not be the same. Let there be a real change. And Lord, minister to us. Minister to us by your spirit. Speak and touch our lives in a beautiful way. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing time in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I am so excited to be here today and to share the word of God with you just after lunchtime. Amen. Have you had lunch? No, you haven't had your lunch. Okay, so you have lunch after this amazing message. Amen. Today, I want to share with you, I bring you greetings from, I don't know where, from Liberia, probably. Yes, from Monrovia. We were blessed in Monrovia. And we experienced a powerful crusade. Yes. And um, really blessed. The Lord gave us opportunity to be there in their FIFA stadium. Yes. So that was a blessing. I think no one has actually had a campaign there before, a crusade there before. So it was a blessed uh, opportunity. We were there uh, 11 years ago. Yes, so we are, and we're excited to have the opportunity to go there again 11 years later. And it was a much a different campaign, uh, greater in many ways. And so we were blessed. For five days we were in the stadium. Yes. So, yes. Jolene, who sings, you know, who sang just now, she has a twin sister. So her sister was singing, and I thought it was Jolene all the time. So Jolene's father was the chairman of the crusade. Yes. Huh? Pastor Nakoja's father-in-law. <laughs> Bishop Nakoja's father-in-law. Yes. But we have an amazing family in, um, in uh, Liberia, yes. Because every town that we went to 11 years ago, we have built churches there. We have church buildings in all those towns. And then First Love Church also has also built a, a, their own First Love Cathedral there. So the First Love Pastor was able to drag me to the church on my way to the airport. So I went to look at their church building and they are doing very well, very nice. So Pastor Michael Gazer, he's the First Love Pastor there. You know, he was here right at the beginning. And, um, huh? Pastor doctor, yes, a medical doctor. So it's, an, it's another example of a lay person. You know, we have so many lay people that are doing great things. So he's, he's really doing well. He got a good land in the middle of the city and uh, built a church. And uh, he was able to pull me to his church building. The grown-ups didn't ask me to come to the, their church buildings, but the first love children asked me to come, so I went. Yes. That is a great blessing. It's, it's a blessing to see people that have been with us. They've gone out there and they are doing great, great works. And, it's also, and they are still with us. Yes, they are not offended about anything. Amen. That is a blessing. 
So one of the reasons why we want a lot of people to be lay people is because we don't want you to be offended by anything. Because when you work as an employee, or you are employed, I should say, you, you know how there's strikes, union strikes, negotiations, and people ha- come up with so many things. We should be paid more. We, should be, we, we, we have hardly had anything like that in the 35 years. You know, I've been a pastor for 35 years. Yes, I got married 35 years ago in June. This coming June was 35 years. So I was a pastor when I was 25 Yes, that's when I became a pastor. And over the years, um, we found that, you know, so, the, being a pastor is not about a job. Now, by the grace of God, we have a, a professions. And that's why even when people come into ministry, always let them finish your school. Do the school. Going to university is basic. It's basic. Very soon, we will not let anybody become a pastor unless you've been to university. But most of our pastors who are out in the villages and other towns, we are sponsoring them to go to university, all of them. We are paying for everybody to go to university. Those who want to go. Some don't even want to go, even if you pay for them. So at a point, we are going to introduce that if you, if you don't uh, go to, if you've not been to university, you can't be a pastor uh, because you have not finished your basic education. You need a basic. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, you know, being, going to school, it helps you to think. You know, it helps you to think. Yes. Even those who've been to school, they can't think something. How much more if you don't go? <laughs> You get it? Beautiful. So, today, um, so, so that is it. So, we th- really thank God for all these um, wonderful. So, that's why we say we like people to be lay. Because you have to be really sure, you know, before you come. I was talking to somebody who has come into the ministry uh, she used to live in America. Do I have enough volume on this microphone? The people cannot hear me. Well, I, I'm not the controller. Listen, you, you got a last opportunity to save yourself. Can you hear me? Give, give more. You are not selling the volume. Just increase the volume. Now, what was I saying? What was I saying? I was talking to somebody, yes, who is in the full-time ministry, and I was asking that, yes, is it a blessing to be in full-time? He said, yes. But the difference between full-time ministry and not being in full-time ministry, she said, from the outside, full-time ministry does not look attractive. But when you are inside, it's different. He said that, and she, she explained that in the ministry, we only advertise the cross. You see, other jobs advertise the benefits. You'll get this, you'll get health care, travel allowance. You can go to a pharmacy shop, buy all your toothpaste. Another thing, then you write the receipt, cost of drugs. That's what they do. Cost of drugs, fuel allowance, this, that, that, all that. Oh, yes. But for full-time ministry, you see, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. So we are not here to advertise. Oh, when you come, you will have this. You will have What we say is you have nothing. Get ready for nothing. Hmm? What do you think? Fantastic. So if you think to be in ministry, you are going to have advertised, oh, 
doctors, this salary every year is increased by 15%. And then your uh, travel allowance will be paid for this and this and that. There's nothing like that. All we have on offer is what? The cross. And what does the cross stand for? Suffering, losing, suffering, sacrificing, and dying. Hey! And when somebody asks you that, since it's losing, suffering, sacrifice, and that, how come you are still alive? The answer is Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes. Nevertheless, I still live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. You see, you are crucified. It's like coming to Jesus. We say, come to God, come to God, come to God. And you suffer to know Jesus. Uh, you people, uh, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. You have not done your work. This is not the time. Somebody should come and pour water on them. <laughs> Away. At least arrange it straight. Eh? Come and straighten it. Oh, you should have let them come to straighten it so that they will. Hey. Brother, brother, go away, go away. You are disturbing, I'm preaching. You know. Right. Hmm. So it says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I'm like, life's amazing. How many have watched a movie? There's a movie, I don't know if it's Clint Eastwood. But he was hanged at the beginning of the movie. But he didn't die. You know, it's not a good, a bad, and ugly. There's another one. that They actually hanged him, the person. And then somehow, he, he, somebody came and saved him or something. Good, a bad, and ugly. They kept saving the guy. But that was a different way of saving. But this one, they hanged him and left that he was, he was dead. So then you see that the scripture applied to him, that nevertheless I live. Uh -huh. Nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. So it's almost surprising that you have actually been crucified, but nevertheless you are still alive. That's the mystery of full-time ministry. Oh yes. Many people who criticize full-time ministry, they are just a few who criticized full-time ministry when they were in full-time ministry. It's now that they are poor. It's now that they are struggling. Yes. Because you, you never know what was a good thing till you, you lose it. So what a blessing. Today, I'm going to preach to you about Monsters. This is the topic, monsters. Do you want to hear my message or I should close? Yes. Now, how monsters are created and then how to prevent you from becoming a monster. And first of all, what is a monster? Yes. I don't know whether you are interested in my message or I should go to another country and go and preach it over there. All right. What is a monster? A legendary animal combining features of animal and human form or having the forms of various animals in combination such as a centaur, a griffin, or a sphinx. You to bring the definition of, uh, what do you call it, all right? So, it's like an animal, 
All right, a grotesque animal. Any animal, let me give you another definition. Any animal or a human grotesquely and you need to bring the word grotesque. It's also an important word we need now for some people. Grotesquely deviating from the norm, from the normal shape of behavior or character. It's a monster. All right? A person, any animal, but we are interested in humans. But it also defines animals. Like an animal that's a combination of different animals and very scary looking. But then a human being, okay, grotesquely, is a, is a dictionary working? Somebody's, somebody's on leave. And it's the internet. Oh, the internet is, has been blamed. But... <laughs> My internet is not working, but I am telling you the definitions. How do you need internet for the uh, dictionary? So you see, you need uh, things offline. Those of you who depend on internet for everything, you are seeing pepper now. Hmm. Uh huh. Yes. Something of unnatural size or shape or quality. Specifically, an animal or plant departing greatly from the usual type. All right? Anything or person of unnatural or excessive ugliness or deformity, wickedness or cruelty, wickedness or cruelty is a monster. Wow. Wow. How many want to become a monster? A spiritual monster? A character who is a monster? Grotesquely or greatly deviating? Distorted? Unnatural? Abnormal? Hideous? Disgusting or otherwise? Reviling? Hey. Charlie, anything grotesque? Please check the meaning of grotesque. The word grotesque is down there. Look at it, grotesque. Look, when you come to church, we also learn English. How many have noticed that your English improves? Grotesque. All right? A person who excites horror by wickedness or cruelty. It's another definition. So, a great distortion from normal, okay, is a monster. All right? So you can have a monstrous sister or a monster brother or a monster pastor or a monster person. It's a monstrosity. Check the meaning of grotesque. Is it grotesque? Put it up, please. Grotesque. Yeah, distorted, unnatural in shape. Beautiful. Anything grotesque. Disgusting, otherwise grotesque deviation. That is a monster. So today, when, when you go home to, tonight, today, was, what did you learn about the monsters? <laughs> we learned it in church. Monsters. All right? Beautiful. So, anything that is shifting, you can have a mon... Check the meaning of the word monstrosity. Monstrosity. Beautiful. Yes. The state of being monstrous or out of the common order of nature. That which is monstrous, a monster. All right? Now, are there monsters in church? Are there people who did, how many want to become a monster? Are you sure? I'm going to read you from the Bible. Trust me, anything I don't show you from the Bible, forget it. 
is useless. But if I show you from the Bible, then it's between me and you. We got to believe the Bible. What do you think? Okay. Tell your brother, something may define you. I hope you will not fall into this monstrous. (laughs) Are you there? Now, Verse 18, Romans chapter 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 19. Can somebody else read it for me? Can, is, there any, is there anybody who is a reader? No, I wanted somebody with a good... Okay, Maxine. Maxine says she's from America. So please read it for, my, for us. Yes. Use your Canadian accent and then, and then read it for us. All right? How many want to go to Canada one day? Oh, you'll be there. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. All right. For God hath showed it unto them. All right. Verse 20. <laughs> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly Look, a little seen. more Canadian, okay? Just flow. We, we can understand it. Don't think that like we are local, uh, whatever. Like when you speak, we, we cannot understand what you are saying. Eh? What do you think of us? Okay, carry on. Being understood by the things that are made, even even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they that are without excuse. Verse 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Carry on, we are are going far. So if you go so slowly. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools Mm -hmm. and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. Oh, yes. Carry on, baby. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, Mm. fornication, Mm. wickedness, Mm. covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Malignity. 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 Yes, Canada is not, it didn't, English is not from the, you need to speak the Queen's English, all right? Carry on. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, 
but have pleasure in them that do them. Yes. Now, from verse 28, we see the description of distorted human beings. All right? And that is what I'm describing as from verse 28 downwards. It says, they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. So God gave them over to, some of you think I'm preaching about something, but I'm not preaching about them. I'm preaching about what is in the verse there. Don't be worried. All right? They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. What is the meaning? Dictionary man, be ready with explaining of words. All right? So you don't have a reprobate mind. We are reading the Bible together. This is what, this is what you call bring your mind Bible study. Everybody brings his mind. We read the Bible and then we explain to ourselves. Amen. Amen. To do those things which are not convenient. Things that are not appropriate. Okay? Now then it starts to list an appalling list of horrible characteristics of human beings. All right? And this is, you, I, okay, let's look and you see whether you want to such a person to be your husband or wife. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Ah, not even one sin has been left out. <laughs> Number two, fornication. Hmm. Wickedness. Lord have mercy. There are people who are wicked like they can't show mercy. Then covetousness. I mean money loving. You even marry by looking at the lady's parents. When you are proposing, you check out her parents and what she can inherit. And you check out her passport. If she has a foreign passport and I marry her, then I'll also have her leave to remain. Mercy. Maliciousness. Like you see that somebody is saying something intentionally wicked. Huh? What is the meaning of malicious? In harboring ill will, enmity. Somebody does something, you see that it's proceeding from hatred. Dictated by malice with wicked and mischievous intentions and motives. Like you make, you say something with an intention. There is a bad thought in your mind. Wrongful and done intentionally without just cause or excuse. A malicious act. Anyway. Carry on, go back. Scripture, please. Oh, yes. Full of envy. Murder. Huh? Full of... It's not easy to live near people who are jealous of you. It's not easy to live in the jealousies, in between the jealousies of women. It's not easy. It's tough. It's like chewing hard meat. It doesn't finish. It becomes like chewing gum. Yes. It's not easy to live in the, in the envy, envies of people. You prosper, more prosperity, then it's like some hatred has come. You don't understand why you are disliked. Hmm? 
if your face is nice, you're always getting into trouble because you are beautiful or because you are handsome or because you speak well. It's not easy. Hmm? In our small church that we are doing, we haven't insulted anybody. Do you realize somebody is angry with us? Oh. I'm just happy in the church. People are not happy that we are happy. It's called skin pain. Murder. Now, somebody who can kill another person is a dangerous person. And the Bible says hatred. He that hates his brother is a murderer. Recently, they killed some man in his hotel in the north. I mean, how? You know? It's something, eh? Murderers. One day I spoke to a murderer. And I asked him, when you were killing Did you not have any feelings? He said, no. And I I said, I said, did anybody, any of the people you killed, did did any of them beg? He said, yes. He said, one one man asked me, please don't kill me. So I just killed him. Yeah. What's the next verse? Yeah. Debate. Too much talking. You know, people marry and they wonder why there's no more love. Down there, there is a debate. Hmm? The marriage is a debater's club. You see, a de- what is a debate? Debate is that you, you, we, we say that, is Ghana improving since independence? Then there are people who say, no, Ghana is not including since independence. This group said, yes, Ghana is improving since in the back. Then they will argue, ah. Huh? What's the next one? Ah, to engage, wait, wait. To engage in what? Combat. To contend for in words or arguments. To strive to maintain by reasoning, to dispute. Now let me say this to Christian wives. Right, uh, many Christian wives don't realize that arguments make you unlovely because you have Christian couples, they don't have any major problem, but they have a lot of argument about let's say, should the child sit in a child's seat or not when it's in the car, or should you? Uh, pork or beef? Or should you buy your food here or there? Or who will bath first? Or, I mean, something you don't know what it is and it becomes a long argument for and against little, little issues. So a lot of Christian couples are not happy because of this debate. Yes. Because the head of the house is the one who has to take a decision. Because that's the meaning of the word head. That's why God didn't create the family without creating order. I mean, after all, one person has to take the decision at the end of the day. At the end of the day. Whether it's right or wrong. Yes. So it's sad for the ladies that you won't be taking the decisions. But wait till you become a widow. Then you will see, ah, I wish. You know, I've, in, I've interacted with many widows. Yes. I've interacted with many widows. And you wait till you talk to a Christian widow. Then you see how they long for what you were calling nonsense. I wish I had it. Yeah. Somebody, one widow said to me that I have nobody to call to ask about something. But remember when you used to ask, it was always a to and fro. Carry on. Deceit. Wow. 
What about when you find out that your husband is a master deceiver? One wife, when her husband died, she was very sad. Then after some time, she started to meet his girlfriends. And she found out that she didn't know anything about her husband. The guy was a master deceiver. So now she wasn't sure whether to be sad or angry. So she entered into what? Confusion. Uh, Deceit. Malignity. Bring malignity. Uh Aha. Hey, somebody is working faster. The, The state of quality of being malignant, which is a disposition to evil. Now, when a doctor finds a lamp, or let's say a mass anywhere in the body. Let's just take, let's say, example, the breast. The word we use, the word we use as doctors is that, is it benign or is it malignant? And that's the word malignant. It disposition to do evil. Like this lamp has a disposition to do evil to the person who it is in. Whereas there may be a lamp which doesn't have that disposition to do evil to the person. So that's why I say it's, it's malignant. Or there is a malignancy. This is how we talk. Doctors, am I speaking the right? There are so many doctors here. Ah, Dr. Joel is also here. Dr. Maxine is also here. And Dr. Kiki is also here. So many doctors. Yeah, you see, you see the word disposition to do evil. It's like if you don't take it, this person will do something evil to you. Hey, this, this is monstrosities. If you have all this in a person, now look at it. Extreme evilness of nature or influence. Perniciousness, heinousness, the malignity of fraud. Hmm. It's serious. Go back to my scripture, please. Backbiters. Now, whisperers. Yes. Have you ever entered an office and they were talking and then they just, <laughs> they stopped talking. Or they used to say, whisperers. I hate whisperers. I hate whisperers. I don't like working with whisperers. Yes. Because I tell you what I think. Even if I don't like it, I will tell you. That's right. So that's why I don't I don't accept because then it's not an equal relationship. You You are whispering, and when I I tell you all my heart, I'm standing here preaching and I I share all that I have in me. I'm sharing all these words with you. And then you are whispering. He's coming uh, A by A. The guy. Now, we have a lot of whispering. Yeah. Even the politicians amongst themselves, in their own party, they whisper. You would have thought that everybody supports every, whatever they are doing. Backbiters. As soon as you turn, they bite your back. Huh? Haters of God. Despiteful. The words are so many. That's why I said, how did somebody, how did the human race, how do human beings get degraded to such a condition? How many want to know how to become evil like this. No, so that you avoid it. What about those in the corner? They can't hear, you see. No, they can't hear. All those in that corner, they cannot hear. Can you hear? Wave your hand if you can hear. Wave your hand if you can hear. Aha, okay. How do human beings get degraded? 
How do human beings get distorted? How do people change and you have, yes, it's a man, but it's a distortion of a man. Yes, it's a woman, but it's a distortion. How do we become monsters? Look at it. And I'm not going to shorten this message because of time. I don't know what the time is, but I want to assure you that I'm going to take this one to the end. Huh? So if you know you don't want to hear this message, you should unfasten your seatbelt and go home early. Proud. Boasters. Huh? Now, when you say proud, you know, one time I had two pastors. One had fallen into sin and difficulty. All right? And the other one had not fallen into, he was faithful to his wife and everything was good. Okay? But he was very proud. Now, somebody asked me, which of these two would I prefer to relate with? As I prefer to relate with the brother who had fallen into whatever, any day. The proud guy, even up to today, is still some way. Yes. But the brother who fell into whatever, is doing okay. Yes. That's why we have toilet paper in the church. <laughs> to do what? To clean. Uh, to clean what? You are looking at me. These people. We clean a mess. Yes. But the pride. You see, pride is the first sin in the world. It's Lucifer. It's invisible and it's horrible. Yes. So you would think that when you just mention pride, you just mentioning bad things. No, but it's a horrible thing to relate with. And I always remember, God, those two people had the problem at the same time, many years ago. One had fallen into, see, clearly there was no argument about whether he has fallen into moral, whatever, failure. It was clear. There wasn't an argument about it. The other one hadn't done all that, but he was so some way, so proud. Attitude, this, talking, saying things. So, wow. And I think, which of these two would I prefer to relate with? Yes. Pride. Horrible. Back to the scripture. Inventors of evil things. Look at the inventions we have. You go to Switzerland, they will sit down for peace talks. These people who are fighting with these people. When they finish, each group will come. The Switzerland people themselves will sell you the weapons. Because one of the things we manufacture in Switzerland is weapons, arms. You see them in the mountains, factories. You can have some guns. Then the enemy, this one can have, after the pistols. You can have some guns. You too, you can have some guns. High level weapons. Huh? Eh? Right now, they have bullets that are guided. Like when you shoot the bullet from a gun. It, no, no, it doesn't go straight depending on where you shoot it. it the, the bullet is guided. It goes to a target. It can turn. Oh, yes. Internet guided uh, bullets. Ah. <laughs> uh, the inventions are wild. Yes, yes. Weapons, armored cars, tanks, everything. I was thinking about, you know, a German supplying tanks to Ukraine to fight. I was thinking that Germans make BMW cars, Mercedes cars. Like one Mercedes car will cost or BMW, I don't know how much, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, $40,000, $50,000, $100,000, whatever. But they make tanks. One tank will be $18 million. $20 million. So the same BMW tank. 
for killing and it will be bombed in one second. Boom, it's finished. Go off. It's fantastic. Next one. Disobedient to parents. Are we here or we are not here? I don't know whether I'm talking to the right group. Hmm. Covenant without understanding. Pray about it. Without understanding. People don't understand anything at all. No matter how you preach, how you talk. Covenant breakers. Covenant. What is covenant? Marriage. I promise I will be a pastor. I promise I will do this. I promise I'm your friend today. We break the covenant. Even some of you, beloved, you have had four beloveds. Still, you are breaking that. You told I will marry you. But you break your covenant. You sang it too. You sang, I will marry you. I will marry you and I will take you home. Say I want you, but be very nice to me. Hey, when I see her, I'll say I love you. I'll marry you and I'll take you home. And I will say I want you. But please be very nice to me. Then after some time, I don't want you. I'll say I want you. I'll say I like you. I'll say I need you. Then after some time, I don't want you. And I don't need you. And we don't talk anymore. We don't, we don't play anymore. We don't joke anymore. There's tension in the house. You can cut the tension with a knife. No. We don't kiss anymore. Hmm. Most of the Christian couple don't kiss anymore. Ask them privately. Ask them. I think I'll stop saying all these kind of things. Yeah. Hmm. This is the right place. <laughs> Bring me my scripture, please. Without natural affection. Like how a man is supposed to have affection. You don't have it. Eh? Or how a lady, you look so soft. Would have thought that there would have been some softness, some delights, some comforts. But nobody knows what is happening in the house. Oh. Find the nearest hard sister. And say, sister, are you a hard sister without natural affection? When your husband is sick, you tell him that you know where the medicine is. Go and take your medicine. All right. Implacable. Implacable means unforgiving. Unforgiving. I will never forgive you. That's in, check implacable. Yeah, you put it there. Not placable, not to be appeased. Incapable of being pacified. You, you, are, 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 you, can't, you can't calm me down. Hey, Charlie, pray you never marry somebody like this. Oh. Yeah. Put the verse that says, incapable of. Officer, please. <laughs> Incapable of being pacified. Incapable of being relieved or assuaged. Inextinguishable. Hey. Are these monsters or not? How many are saying that these are monsters? Yes. It's a deviation from what you would have expected you get from normal human beings. No one expects that that is how it is. Yes. But these deviations exist. 
the last, continue, we are finishing. Unmerciful. Yes. The next verse. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So these are monsters. How many want to know how a monster like these monsters are created? Only four people. I think I've closed. I'm going because I think nobody is interested in knowing. Uh, I think after, when I was in Monrovia, they were more excited about what I was saying. Where's my ticket? Somebody should get me a ticket. Are you sure you are interested? How? Ask your neighbor. So how does a person become distorted? How does a person become some way? Wow. Wow. Shall I show you how it happens? Go back to Romans chapter 1. Verse 21. It says, because that when they knew God is giving the reason. This is Romans 1. We were reading this is the part, we've read it already, but you didn't see it. That's why I'm bringing you back. He says, because that when they knew God, number one, they glorified him not as God. They didn't give glory to God or praise to God. They didn't praise God. And then number two, neither were thankful. They were not thankful. So, being unthankful, are you with me? Is the reason why the human nature deteriorates into what it is. Yes. Look at the scripture. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful but became vain, useless in their thinking. You see, when you are not thankful, your thinking becomes like useless thinking. You become like a fool. Yes. And professing yourself to be wise, you become a fool. So thankfulness is very, very important in Preventing yourself from changing into an evil person. Yes. If you look at second, let me just quickly look at second Timothy chapter three. You see a list. It says in the last days, verse one, dangerous times shall come. Dangerous. Now dangerous, why? Why is the world going to be more evil and wicked? Because in the men shall be lovers. You see, it starts to write a list of degradation, a list of appalling and unfortunate uh, distortions of the human nature. Again, men shall be lovers of themselves covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, and what? Unthankful, next to unholy. You have to see where unthankful falls in, right in the list of these moral blemishes, and in the list of these degraded qualities, human characteristics. Human beings change. When they are not thankful. That's why I wrote a book, How Can I Say Thanks? How can I say thanks? Because when you are not thankful, you become, you turn into a monster. 
Now, what is it like when people are not thankful? Are you with me? When people are not thankful, they are offended. They are offended and they murmur. Derek Prince says, I learned all this from Derek Prince. Derek Prince says that when people are not thankful, the direct opposite of it is that they become memorous. Memorous. And whisperous. Memorous. And deep offenses and evils build up in people when they are not thankful. So that is why, you know, the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. (laughs) And again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. You see, it, 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 you would even wonder why he's even saying you should rejoice. Because, you, you see, and like if you take, let's say, the first love church, you see, which you should, we, we should be careful that we don't lose it. Like to rejoice, to be happy. That's why I don't shout down people when I'm preaching and they shout. That's, that's what we, that's what we, we are happy, we are happy for that. Because there is more of a rejoicing attitude. That he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. And Philippians 3 verse 1 as well. Philippians 3 and verse 1. Finally, my brethren. Like the last thing that I'm I'm saying is, you know, rejoice in the Lord. Now, many people are married and become distorted versions of the happy creature they were when they were getting married. Marriage counselors, are you there or you are not there? Yes. No more is there joy, no more is there happiness about most things. Rejoice in the Lord. Not murmur. Rejoice is all part of being thankful. It's all part of being grateful. It's all part of having the right attitude. Because God has created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Instead of being grateful, instead of being thankful, you become stupid in your mind and say that there is no God. And God says, okay, I'll give you up to become an abnormal person and to become a monster. And to become a strange creature, a strange child from your family. Instead of being content and thankful for what God has given you in your family. So people turn and change into monsters when the thankful attitude is not there. The same father will give birth to three children and one will be unthankful. And others will be thankful for the, exactly the same things. So a need to have a thankful attitude. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 16, what does it say? Rejoice evermore. Hmm? John Wesley in his journal. He said, John Wesley taught about perfection. And he said that anybody who can fulfill three verses in the Bible, that is what he means by perfection. He wrote it in his journal. And the three verses are 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice evermore. The second is verse 17. Pray without ceasing. And the third is verse 18. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yes. He said this is his definition of perfection. Yes. To rejoice always and pray without ceasing. And then in everything, 
give thanks in everything. Give thanks to God. You know the Bible says, enter his courts with praise. It means you cannot come near God. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You cannot come near God unless you are thankful. And, but there are two levels, his gates and his courts. You cannot come through his gates or ever be close to God unless you are thankful. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and then into his courts with praise. Amen. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So, very, very important that all of us learn this thankful attitude and thankfulness because you will start to deteriorate. Do you see? Now, when you come to Ghana, we are, we are in Ghana, right? Are we in Ghana or not? Mm -hmm. Now, Ghana is quite a blessed country. If you travel around, you'll see that we are blessed, all right? And um, we are blessed in God. We are blessed in a nation. But we complain a lot. Do we complain or we don't complain? We complain a lot. Yes. And, and some of you, the workplaces where you work, they complain a lot. Now, one of the things you need to be careful is of, of receiving a certain culture from where you live and from where you work into your Christian life. And before you realize, you, be, you imbibe the spirit that is at work or that is in your family or that is wherever you live. If it's a complaining group, you'll find yourself complaining when others are so impressed. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. What a blessing. Many years ago, I met an older man, and all his children were complaining about him. He's like this, he's like that. Hey, this man, you do this. Hey, hey, that man, the old man, they're this, the old man, like this. But when I met him, I found this man to be such a wise man. I enjoyed so much of his wisdom. And it was interesting that someone comes, and the same person whom everybody is complaining about. Somebody is finding such great things about the person. It's amazing. So when you come to be part of the church, part of your family, you must endeavor to be thankful. Lest you deteriorate. Said that because they were not thankful, neither were thankful nor gave glory to God. God said, Charlie, you are off. And even for me, in my small world, I look for thankfulness in people. More and more, I look more to see in their eyes whether they are grateful for the things that are done for them. More and more, I, I look out for it. Because I realize that people don't know what we have and what we don't have. Amen. So we must be thankful. Now, there is something that is going to come by all means. And that is offenses. Okay? Matthew 18 and verse 7. Sister over there chewing gum. Please, we don't chew gum here. I don't know if you are a visitor. Are you a visitor? You a visitor? No, take that gum out of your mouth. We don't chew gum here, please. Don't chew, chew gum in front of you. It's rude. All right. Now, this is something that can offend somebody. But you see... There will be offenses. Matthew 18 and verse 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. But it must needs be that offenses come. Why must offenses come? Because 
It's part of your spiritual testing to have something that provokes you. All right? Something that stirs you up and something that hurts you. Are you with me? Now, the word offenses, woe to the world because of offenses, is the word scandalon, and it means a trap stick. So it's like you are walking on your way, and then something causes you to trip and you fall. And when you fall, you get hurt. So it is even showing you how it is to let somebody go down and get hurt. So you must be careful because as for hurt, you will be hurt. Like you must have the capacity to overcome the hurt. If you think it's going to be smooth sailing, everything is going to be nice and easy, there's nothing like that. Look, Jesus said, it woe to the world, woe to the world because of offenses. Or in other words, things that make you stumble and things that hurt you. For it must needs be that offenses come. Amen. Now, how do offenses come? And all this is to prevent you from ever turning into a monster. Amen. So, number one, rebukes and corrections. Rebukes and corrections. Anytime you are rebuked or corrected, watch out. That is straight away a big door open for you to fall. Yes. Are you there? Lift your hand and say, I can receive correction. Yes. Almost all the orangus that I've experienced, not all, but many, the point of departure was the point of correction of something. That is the point of us going our separate ways. Correction. So, when you are correcting somebody, and when correction is coming, you have to watch yourself carefully. But if you don't take care, you know, you'll be surprised. People, when corrected, that is the point. You know, many people feel they are too big to be corrected. Nobody can tell me what to do anymore. So, in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 27, it says, Therefore thou shalt speak these words unto them, but they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt call unto them, but they will not answer thee. Verse 28. But thou shalt say unto them, This is a nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. This is a group that receive, does not receive correction. Truth is perished and is cut off from their mouth. They don't want to receive correction. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do this. And every organization has something that you can't do. Every, every organization, every group has something. You, from here to here, you can do this. From here to here, you can't do this. Every organization has that. Every church has that. The body of Christ has it. Every ministry has it. Every family has it. It's not a problem to correct you when you are young. Anyone who is an older, all my older pastors are more difficult for me to correct. That's why I started the first love church. I just moved and started a new church. I just was, I'll just start all over again. That's all. Because you become more difficult to even guide or even correct. 
Hey, people don't like to be corrected at all. Or to be told, no, no, you are, you are wrong. You can't do, this is wrong. You are, whatever. And, and, and you don't look good in front of people. Ah, that is, I mean, that, hey, Charlie, that one there, hey, 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 it's like, you, I mean, you, you can't touch me. <laughs> now, why is it that people hate correction? And I'm teaching you so that no matter how old you become, and no matter how long you've been, there's a do you know how many years I've been in this church? Do you know how many? And so what? You've been so many years in the church, and so what? Methuselah was whatever year, so we don't know what he did in this world. He's the oldest man who ever lived. Your being around for so long means almost nothing. If you don't know, it means almost nothing. Being around, even if at all, it may even mean that you are changing and getting corrupt. Because you see, in Romans 1.20, the Bible says that the earth is subject to vanity, and in Romans, uh, Romans 8.20 and Romans 8.21, it says that we are bound or in bondage to corruption. 8.20, yeah, look at it. 20. Bondage of corruption. Corruption means spo- it spoils. Almost everything, whether it's a human institution, it's a group of people, is subject to spoiling internally. It happens. Everything gets spoiled. That's why they say, oh, it's a human institution. There's problem in it. There's corruption in it. The older people are. They don't want you to say anything about them. If you say this, oh, I'm going to my uh, Roman. I'm going to my uh, other church. I'm going to this. I'm going to... You can't, you, do, you can't tell us what to do. You can't talk to us. You can't say anything, whatever. We are beyond it. Oh, yes. But I want you to know that it's part of being... In a ministry. So number one. People hate. Re- 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 I'm going to show you why people hate rebukes. And number one is because it shames them. It reduces them. In the eyes of men. And that lowering is what they dislike. I don't lower me. Why should you lower me? Why should you even speak with that tone of voice? Why should you say what you said? Psalm 39 verse 11. It says when thou with rebukes. Does call correct man for his iniquity. Thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. You see, when you rebuke a man, no, no, put the verse back, put the verse back. When you rebuke or correct a man, you make his beauty to consume away. He's not so beautiful anymore. You make his beauty to consume away. That's why people don't want to, want to be corrected. So why should, you, why should you say that? But why did you say it at the meeting? And why, 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 when you sit in front of all these people, my, my subordinates, and why should you say this and that and that? And why do you do this with that and that? Because you are not praised. All you want us to do in the church is to praise you and say, oh, Shawanda, thank you for your great blessing that you are. Number two. The second reason why people don't want to be rebuked the first reason is because it makes their beauty go down. And at home, some of you don't like your fathers. Some of you don't like your mothers. Because every time they rebuke you, it's like each time you feel that they are putting you down. One man, he told his daughter, this and that. She said, I'm not that. I, I, I can make it. I, 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 I'm on top. I said, wow. Hmm. Sorry for left. Number two. It's fighting the rebuke. People want to be praised. That is what people want. They only want you to praise them. They only want praises. No, no, I want rebuke. Praise me, but don't rebuke me. Say good things about me at the meeting. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. You see, human beings only proclaim that they are good. I'm a good friend. Why should he speak to me like that? Why did they do that? But all of us know that we are some way. We all know that we are some way. We know we want, you want people to speak the good things. But nobody should say anything that is not praising you. And worshipping you and honoring you. You are a bad child. 
Think about a child. You can't say anything. You can't say about this. You can't talk about that. You can't say this. We can only praise and say, your dress is nice. Your shoes are nice. Your this is nice. But you don't want us to say that you are, you are not bathing. You don't want us to say you don't know how to cook. You don't want us to say that you don't know about this. We don't want us to say anything about anything. We only have to praise you. We have to, that's why a lot of girls, you have a lot of girls that are marrying them is, is, is a mistake. You see, to invest in them is a big mistake. I, I, also, brothers, I would advise you, don't invest in, 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 in girls or whatever. Invest in your life, in your ministry, than wasting your time on people who don't know how to do anything in this world. You have wasted your money and wasted your time. Oh, yes. You are wasting your time. You see people that don't know how to cook, don't know how to sell, don't know how to have sex, don't know anything in this world. And you wonder, they are just advertised only how to dress up and put on a wig and come and pose and everything about you is not real. When we remove the hat and we wipe your face and you see that you've changed into a monster. Invest in your life. Don't invest in these useless people. I think I'll, I'll close now. I've closed. <laughs> you only want to be praised. You only want to be praised. Oh, these girls, you don't know how even to fry fish. I mean, fish that you fry, you don't know anything at all. What do you go and marry such people and see? Because it's only praises you want to hear. No one can correct you. No one can speak about your character, your attitude, your behavior, your jealousies, your, your, your way of speaking, your smell, even your body and your smell. You are smelling. We can't say it. Oh, Charlie, let's go home. Look, uh, come and take over. Come and take over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somebody should come and take over. I'm talking about monsters. The creation of monsters. People who have spoiled children. That children, are allowed, that children are not allowed to work. Children don't do, do anything. Don't do anything practical. Don't do anything. Cannot sweep. Cannot wash their own underwear. You see the underwear that have piled up. That they will be going to pick one. Let me pick one. And pick one to wear because there is none to wear. You see them. They are choosing one. An old one. You go and marry. You have invested in the wrong person. I'm telling you. You will see it for yourself. To marry such a person is a responsibility contractor. You are just taking a contract to have a, a responsibility to look after something. Not, nobody is going to look after you. Nobody is going to care for you. Some of you, your parent, your parent goes out they come late, they go out, they come late, they go out. So they are not in the house. To see your bad behavior. Uh, to see that you don't know anything. You don't know anything about anything. How to even use a, a fork and a knife. How to sit at the table. You only know how to look on Facebook and how to do makeup. And I mean, you're always on your phone like this, on your phone like this. Now that the internet has gone, you are confused. I don't know whether I'm talking to myself. Maybe I'm talking to myself. <laughs> yes. That's how monsters are created. Number three. I'll finish today, dear. I'll finish all my points. Yeah, I've told you. Number three. <laughs> Allow rebukes and correction to purge out evil. Rebuke and correction purges evil. It, it, it causes you to, it purges evil. So when a person doesn't have rebuke, evil remains inside the person. It's like taking Imodium when you shouldn't take it. Do you know Imodium? Imodium, it, it tells the 
And in uh, the intestine to relax. Don't move again. Meanwhile, there is something in there that should be it's better out. It's better than this. So those of you who take emodium all the time, you are keeping evil inside. But rebukes. Eh? Oh, some of you, all that you needed was a hot rebuke. Uh, one hot rebuke, it, it would have changed your whole life. Look at how you've become. A phantom of a, of, 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 of a marriageable, nice person. A phantom of a pastor. Proverbs 20 verse 30. The blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil. So do stripes the inward parts of the belly. The blueness of the wound. You see, the wound you get, the hurt you get from rebukes, it cleanses evil from you. It cleanses evil from you. Some of you, eh, no one can even tell you that there's no salt in the rice. Just salt, common salt. Nobody can say it. Too. If you say it, there will be a problem in the house. There will be a face. There will be an attitude. There will be a change. There will be an atmosphere. Attitude sisters. I'm saying this because the sisters are praised all the time. Oh, your dress is nice. Oh, I like your makeup. Oh, I like your wig. Oh, whatever. Oh, wow. Where do you get it? Oh, what do you get it? this is all that we have. Nobody says the realities to them. And amongst my pastors and many of the leaders, as they get older, dare you point out anything to them. So you see that then. They, they, don't, they don't like it. They don't want to say it. So, the best is you just move toward the young people. They, they, when you rebuke them, they say, oh, yes, daddy. Thank you, daddy. Oh, nobody has told me this before. That is it. So, I hope, you see, some of you will not get a personal counseling. I hope that the preaching is your personal counseling. I'm counseling you personally from here. Hebrews chapter 12, number 4. You must respect and revere correction. Number 5. Rebuke and correction are the stamp of ownership. The what? The stamp of ownership. Hebrews chapter 12. Let us read from verse number 5. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. You see, you can only say these things to children. That's why even marriage, sometimes you, you see that one of the couple behaves like a child, the other one behaves like a stranger. So you can only speak to one side, you can't speak to the other. You just speak to one side and leave the other out. Yeah, because he says, you've forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. There is a way you talk to a child. And it includes rebukes. It's only children you can't about. If a person is a big person or whatever, you shouldn't bother to rebuke the person. You just have to look at the person, say, good morning, Merry Christmas, Happy Easter, this type of statement, Happy Birthday, that's all. So you will see that in marriage counseling, you end up sometimes, if both parties are not seriously children in the church, you see that you can only speak to one side, the other side, you just, good evening, good afternoon, hello, yes, whatever. Or you don't speak to them at all. There is a way you speak to children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked. What is rebuke? It's a, rebu a rebuke is nonsense. Nonsense. You are wrong. You are wrong. Stupid. Why 
should you speak to me that way? That's the way you should be spoken to. And because no one has spoken to you like that before. No one has blocked you. No one has said to you, no. No one has said to you, this is the end. No one has said to you, it's over. No one has said to you, can't proceed any further. No one has said to you that you are wrong and you are right. No one has said it to you before. That's why you are spoiled. That's why you are a spoiled person. You don't know you are a monster. Yes, because no one can, you will not be thankful. If we say that you will not be, you will be so angry, you will be, you will be filled with rage. How can you talk to me like that? What does he mean? What have I done? He doesn't know what I'm doing. You are a man of knowledge without understanding. I've heard all these things before. I'm a man of uh, what? Um, uh, man of knowledge without experience. Yes, somebody told me. I'm a man of knowledge without experience. Because my heart has not been broken before. I don't have that experience before. I pray that you always... You see, that is it. That's, this is what shows you you are no more a child. I pray that you always, you always have to be a child. There must be somebody to whom you are a child towards. And that person can say, Anything with capital A. The next verse. Now, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Not who he hates. It's not the one whom he hates that he chastens. Change the version. And he scourgeth every son. Whom he receives. He corrects everyone he accepts as his son. Yeah, you correct your son. But are there others who are not your sons? Hello. Oh, you are blessed. How is it? Okay. Bye. That's all. But correction, it, is, it means you are a son. One day I told someone, I said, look, the fact that I use you as an example when I'm preaching, it's because I see you as someone who is able to, you, you realize that it doesn't mean that it's you. It rather, it rather means that it's not you. That's why you can be used as an example. Hmm. And there are people we are afraid to use as examples. Yes. He came to stand by my chair. That one I've also been accused of. He came to stand by my chair when he was preaching. Yes, he was talking about me. He, he, he stood, yes, he stood in front of me. He came to stand by my chair when, I, when he was preaching. And I know because, yes, he said, the person said, I, he has told one of our bishops something, and that is why I'm saying what I'm saying. I didn't know what he was talking about. Hmm. Tell your neighbor, Charlie, they are trying to treat you anti-vaccine uh, for anti anti monstrosity vaccination. Yes. Next verse. I've not finished. Now, if you do what? Endure. If you do what? Endure. Chastening. Not enjoy. Not enjoy. Endure. Endure. You, you go through. You struggle through it. When you have been faced or when you are corrected and you are told this is the right. You are out of order. Get up. You are out of order. Hey, people don't want this. <laughs> just one. I remember one pastor. He came for just one meeting. You know, if you see anybody who is a bishop in the church, he's a, he's a strong man. Because the kind of meetings that we have, you know, the things that have been said, the things that have been, that have happened, as you are a bishop, it's not a small thing. Yes, we have been through many, many things. Yes, hot meetings. And you see, the pastors face themselves. Mm? It's not like me. Am I me, me, I'm, I'm not kind and loving? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, but kind and loving is true. Bible says he rebukes whom he loves. The Lord rebukes.
rebuke for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth. Pray that somebody will just treat you as a child. I'm going to ask you a question. How many have ever met somebody who has a smell? Stand up if you've ever met somebody who has a smell. But, but you, you, you didn't tell. No, no. But you didn't say it. it. No, a bad smell. A bad smell. I don't mean perfume, please. I mean a bad smell. Did you, and you didn't, if you told the person, then sit down. If you didn't tell the person. Some you've said it. Some you've not said it. Look at this. Would you, and you, maybe some of you standing have a smell, but you don't, also don't know. And nobody has told you. That there's a smell. That there's a smell. Sit down. Would you not want somebody to tell you? Very important. And tell you how. Because you can't smell yourself. Do you know why you can't smell yourself? Because you smell yourself every day. So you are used to your smell. So you don't smell anything unusual. It's only somebody else who can notice that. Mm. Put my scripture back, please. God dealeth with you as sons. The next verse, quickly. Verse 8. But if you are without chastisement, huh? if you are without, whereof all are partakers, I thank God for Paul for the letters that he wrote. Oh. Clap for Paul. Clap for Paul. He wrote, he really wrote the letters. It says, if you are without chastisement, nobody says anything to you. Eh? Which everybody has blastings and issues. Then you are bastards and not sons. Yes. So the, the sister who was chewing gum, do you know how many sisters, I've even taken the chewing gum from them with my hands. Who has seen me taking people's chewing gum before? I'll take it from you. In camps and other things. So if now your chewing gum has been said to you once, and it's like you are now going on huffing and puffing. Eh, what does it matter? You know, I came to church. What does it matter? One church that we go to then, you realize that they are telling us so many things. And so many, I mean, I don't know, do you know why I was chewing the gum? It was because of my bad breath. I was trying to make sure that this, I forgot to brush my teeth when I was coming. <laughs> and when you finish, you say that we are smelling too. And then, because they were not thankful, because they were not thankful, you change into a monster. Lift your hand and say, I pray somebody will correct me in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, I don't have anybody to tell me my preaching is not good. Or that my preaching could be better this way. I have to analyze to see my own. It's very difficult. I could have had somebody to tell me, do this, like, do that. It's so difficult without somebody to say, do this, like this, like this, like this. What a blessing to be treated as a child. What a blessing to be treated as a child. Put the scripture back, please. The next verse. Furthermore, we have had fathers after our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. That's the response. You rather respect the person more. Shall we not rather be in subjection unto the father of, the, of spirits? Huh? So, my dear friends, God loves you. And so that is the reason why you are going to be chastened. Amen. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit.
that we might be partakers of his holiness. Holiness means specialness. Special. You are special because you are corrected. We can't tell you anything. We can't talk to you. We can't say this is right. This is wrong. The guys were supposed to put this uh, thing here. They didn't do it. I shouldn't say it. I should praise you. Come, come. Those of you who are supposed to put it here, come. Who else? Come. So, so stand here, stand here. Uh, where is he? Come. Stand here. Three of you, stand here. Okay, now these guys, they are supposed to do their work. Be- you people don't know, because they didn't do this, there's a change in the service. Okay, now. Now, I worship you. I worship you. I thank you. Isn't it? I should worship them. Isn't it? I worship you. That's what I should do. I should do. I should give them and bring money for them. Let, come, three of you, come back here. Uh, 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 Solomon, come in. Solomon, go and give them money. We thank them. Come, three of you, come back here. Wait, wait, wait. Bring them here. That one too, they will not come. I say come, they will not come to. They want to make things worse. Give them money. We worship them. We give you money. Thank you for not doing your work. Thank you for not doing your work. So because of you, we couldn't do this in the service. We couldn't do that. We couldn't do so many things. Hmm. We are sorry. We are sorry. Hmm. Hey, I don't know whether I should continue. Point number four, you must re- clear from here and stop acting. False humility. Somebody should pour water on this guy. They are pre- practicing false humility. Uh, but why is the guy hiding at the back there? Number five, rebukes are the stamp of ownership. How many want to be owned? Yes, a shepherd, you see, a shepherd is the owner. A hireling flees because he doesn't own the sheep. He will leave you. The shepherd is for him. These are his own. He wraps them with great love. Yes. The father's rebuke is his stamp of ownership. And that's what Hebrews 12 verse 7 says. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. Amen. Number six. Not receiving correction makes you one of the worst kinds of Christians. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 1. Zephaniah. Woe to her that is filthy and polluted to the oppressing city. She obeyed not the voice and she received not correction. She did what? She she obeyed not the voice. She received not the correction. And she trusted not in the Lord. She drew not near to her God. Look at this. This is a serious verse. Pastors, bishops, big shots, whoever you are, until you are in your grave, you are still a child. A child of God. And you know it. You know it. That's why even as grown-ups, when they give us toys, we are happy. Yes. That's why people play games, video games, at the highest. People, you see them, you think he's, he's doing something. He's playing video games. Serious. The highest executive, you think that they are, I mean, they are doing some Excel sheet, something. They are, oh, they are playing games. 
I don't want to tell you, so there's something I want to say, but I will not give you, I will not, I will not, I will not tell you. Video games. Hallelujah. How many are ready to become one of the serious Christians avoiding monstrosity? Amen. Now, not receiving, number seven, not receiving correction reveals a lack of endurance. A lack of what? Endurance. Bible says in Hebrews 12, 7, if you endure chastening, endurance, you need the capacity to survive the corrections. Our church has been going through various experiences. You need the capacity to endure whatever it is that is happening. And basically, it's a purging. Purging, removing of things. Yes. Endure all things. 2 Timothy 2 verse 10 says, Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. I endure. He says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. You can't come and complain to me about your, your, your father and your mother. I, mean, I wouldn't take it, you know. My father is saying, you don't know how about I don't do it. Endure. Endure. Go through. Do what your parents say you should do. Do it. When they put you through a punishment or put you through a channel or put you through whatever, endure it. Endure teachings. Some of us, I don't want to hear about loyalty. 2 Timothy 4 verse 3 says, For a time will come, they will not endure sound doctrine. Huh? Smooth words. It's like I was like a bad person. With time. Everything became clear as to whether the smooth words or the rebukes and the corrections, which one was better? It's the person who loves you, who will tell you the gospel truth about yourself and about what the issue is. Pray that you will get somebody to tell you the truth. You will even get book. I've been there as a pastor for many years and as a father. Watching people laughing smooth well. There are people who only preach to you encouragement, 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 encouragement. Every day you can do it, you can make it, you can do it, you can make it. Hey, today is your day of favor. Tomorrow is your day of this. This is a day of favor. This is a day of multiplication. The day of answers. The day of... And then I'm coming, rebuke this, 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 whatever. It's like me, I'm not a good preacher. Your mouth like I'm not a good preacher. You even get for my preaching. If you do, I'll go just... I'll, I'm leaving to, uh, to another country right now. <laughs> and dear sound doctrine, those of you who are attracted to the person who is always encouraging you, hey, you are, you are the next making it one. Hey, you are, you are, you are going abroad. Hey, you, I see your beloved. Hey, every day, every day is a good announcement. It's like what I'm preaching. It's like, well, what is it? One day I was preaching about loyalty, you know, like I'm doing that. Somebody can say, is there a problem? Is there a problem? Is there anything that, why, why are you saying all these things? You should be grateful for such teachings. You see, because you are not thankful, you become a monster. Before you realize you've changed into something else. Why are you talking to us like this? Why are you talking to us like, be thankful. So what a beautiful teaching. What a beautiful message. Thank you, Pastor. We understood from the first moment you started to the last moment you were We understood everything. We saw it in the Bible. That's all. Neither were thankful. Then they became monsters. And God said, okay, think how you want to think. It's up to you. I've been there as a pastor. People who don't want to endure the doctrine, the teachings. Oh, what is this? What is it? You have to teach us to bless us. You have to bless our lives and bless us. What blessing? Are we not blessed? Even when you stand here, you are blessed. When you walk here and you feel the air moving around, there's a blessing. Thank 
God that you have been corrected. Thank God you will ever be corrected. You should curse yourself that no one wants to talk about you. For me, I'll tell you, you know, it's when you see that I don't talk. That's the end of you in relation to me. It's the end. Yeah. I have no, the worst response you can get from me is that I don't speak. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm a talker. You know, when we are traveling, let's say like a long journey, we don't even play music. I can talk out from here to Mali. Yes. I'm going home because I think, I don't know what I'm. <laughs> Be just come and take over. <laughs> yes. From here to Bamako. I drove one day from Accra to Mali. In one day. I mean, it, it became two days, but it was continuous. No stopping. No music. Music, no. We don't have even any music in the car. There's a meeting going on throughout. Sometimes I will change the people in the car. Bring this group, come. Bring this group, come. Another group should come. Another group should come. Some sit behind me. Some sit in front. I'll be talking out to Bamako. To up to Bamako. So when you see that I don't say anything, it's the worst. It means that something different has come. Oh yeah. I'm just telling you something personally. And as you see that for God to say that the one that he loves is the one that he's talking. For whom he loved. Yes. Endure and accept and go through good solid teachings like this. Hmm. Are you there? Number eight. Correcting the wrong person can lead to dishonor. Proverbs 9 verse 7. He who corrects a scoffer gets dishonor for himself. And he who reproves a wicked man gets insults. Americano. Americano. Americano, he who corrects a scoffer gets dishonor for himself. And he who reproves, reproves a wicked man gets insult. When people insult you because you corrected them, it's a sign that they are they say, wicked. I tell you, you are a wicked daughter and a wicked son and a wicked person to insult the person who has corrected you. And you know what the person is saying is true. You are a wicked person. It's a sign of wickedness. It's one of the manifestations of wickedness. You are insulting your father. And so, he's an expired father. His time has passed. The anointing has lifted. And you see people <laughs> insulting the loyalty teaching. Beautiful. Number nine. I'm showing you the opposite of being thankful. Rebukes can lead to hatred. Proverbs 9 verse 8. It says, do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Or they will what? Hate you. Rebuke the wise. Rebuke the wise. And they will love you. And they will what? Love you. Today, everyone here is becoming a wise man. Amen? Yes. And we are going to be able to correct you. Yes. I know some people will send me a text after. I call. No, no. I called, I called her sister. She came to sing. I said, you. I said to her, your hair. No one can propose. You are too, you makes you look older. It's not working. She was, she was a child to me, so I could tell her. That was it. She changed her hair. The next moment, she said, daddy, somebody has proposed to me. So yeah, like magic, like magic. 
But many of you grown-ups, if I make a comment about your hair, you ask me, am I a hairdresser? Is it my job? Am I a bishop or a hairdresser? I should decide which one I want to do. Stay in your lane. She was a daughter. One pastor, he, I love this testimony because when he said, he said, look, there was this sister, she was always wearing trousers and, uh, or how do you say it in America? Pants. Pants. Sorry about my American accent, it's not so developed. Pants. And whatever. And one day he said, no, no, you are not dressed. Nobody, nobody was proposing her because she was high. So he took her himself. He said, buy this. Buy this, buy this. I don't know how, I mean, I don't know dresses on the, this thing looks different from when they are wearing it, so I don't know how it, how it works. Isn't it? When it's on the hanger, it looks flat. Yes. <laughs> you don't know whether it's nice or not. But he was able, he pointed out, buy this, buy this. But girls, it's not every dress that looks nice on you. Some of the dresses reduces you badly. But no one has told you, you think it's your best dress. If only you have somebody who loves you. And somebody would tell you, this is not working for you at all. Yeah. So he went to her. He took her. And he said, wear this. As soon as she started wearing dresses, there was a brother who spotted her on her telescope. Yeah. And he proposed to her. And married her. Straight away. Pray that there will be somebody who can say something to you about something. Listen, this message is nice as you are young people. Because you see, I am older than you. You you are the age of my children. Do you see? But I'm talking about when you grow. And I'm preaching to those who feel that they are grown-ups. Yes. And there are some people who have premature aging. You grow too fast in your young body. Your mind grows bigger than your body. Uh, and you always think, hey, I'm, 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 it's not, ah, he's not, he's my small brother. Oh, I, ah, he's my junior. Oh, he's my, ah, I'm older. Than, ah, this. all those who have those, have, hey, it's my, ah, he's my small brother. He's not my big brother. I, oh, I'm older than, oh, he's my junior. Ah, I was in sixth form when he was in. We are sorry. You are too conscious of your rank, your age, your status. Pray that you be a child. Pray that you be a child. My pastor in uh, Malaysia, he told me before he died, he told me I was invited to a church in Malaysia to preach, Assemblies of God Church. He said, when you finish, you come to me. I am taking you here. And you are going for a holiday. So I told him, no, 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 because I will be, I would have been there for two weeks. So if I have to come, it will become three weeks. I can't do that. And he sent another message that you, you, you have to come. You are coming. And I, I, my answer to him, yes, I will be there. I will be there. Even though it's not what I had planned. It will make me stay in one country somewhere for three weeks. But because he said, I, I, I should be there. I said, I'll be there. And he died before he could even take me. Yes. When I sit with him and his wife, his wife will even put her fork in my plate to eat this. So yes, mommy. Eat it. Pray that you have somebody like that. When I sat with Ida Hosa years ago in London, some top hotel, I don't even know where it was. He bought food and all that. I think I was so nervous, you know, that I, I just sort of finished eating quickly. He said, listen, this is very expensive food. Eat it. <laughs> I ate everything. Mean? Yes. What do you mean? Pray that you have some people who can just baby you and ch- make you a child at any time. Yeah. So, today I've showed you what is a monster. And then how the monster are created, isn't it? Isn't it? How did, how, put that verse up. Neither were thankful. Didn't give glory to God. Yes. 
they, not, they were not thankful. And then how offense, offended, an offended person is the opposite of a thankful person. Instead of being thankful, thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling me. Everybody else praises me. You always tell me, you're looking nice. You are this, you are this. But you told me something about myself. Thank you. Thankfulness will change you to a nice person. Nice person to be with. A nice person to have around. So my prayer is that God is going to give you that sweet, beautiful characteristic. Always thankful. I like Derek Prince said that you can't come near God unless you are thankful. And he said, you know, I, I never saw that. He said that the ten lepers, only one came back to say thank you. And he said that only one got near to Jesus. The other nine didn't come near Jesus. So you only come near when you are thankful. Only come near when you are thankful. So I believe everybody. Go home to your homes your parents and say thank you. Say thank you to your husband. Thank you. Thank you for marrying me. Uh, who would have chosen me? Oh, my odd shape. Hmm? Huh? My odd shape. But you like me. Oh, wow. I'm not as like this and this and this and that, uh, but you, like, you chose me. Thank you. And then say thank you to your wife. Be thankful. Otherwise, an evil spirit will be filled in you towards her. Yeah. And you may have a negative attitude. So beginning from today, everybody's going to be thankful. Thankful. Thank God for your church. Oh. Thank God for your pastor. Thank God for the preachers. Thank God. We are not perfect, but we are trying our best. Yes. It will help you and make you stable in the Lord. Stand to your feet. <laughs> I've finished all my points, yes. <laughs> Bonus point. <laughs> Shall I give you a bonus point? Do you remember Herod's wife? Remember Herod's wife? One time, John the Baptist was preaching a very powerful message. And he said, Herod has married somebody's wife. Shouldn't have married her. Herod's wife went ballistic. Somebody brought her the message. Listen to the podcast. John the Baptist was preaching about you today. He spoke about your, you in the, your marriage. Herod's wife grew ballistic, but she didn't have any way to attack him. But one day there was a party, and her daughter danced beautifully. And when her daughter danced beautifully, her father said, Anything, anything you want, I will give to you. So she came, well, Mommy, Mommy, what should I? What should, daddy, daddy says I can have anything I ask. She said, tell him you want head soup. What? Head soup. Head in a soup plate. John the Baptist's head in specific. So they went to cut off John the Baptist's head and put it in a plate during a party and brought the soup head of John the Baptist soup. A brother was telling me the other day he was in Nigeria. They have this uh, goat head. They eat the whole head. They, they, they give you the head. It's, what is it called? A siewu. A siewu, yeah. It's just a full head. Everything disappears, isn't it? The head goes. So John the Baptist was now going to, his head was going to disappear. Would you not agree that she was a monster? Instead of eating, I mean, she should have asked for some nice salmon or something. Some, I, mean, I don't know what. She said, I want a head. I want his head. I want his head on a plate. I want to see it. 
If it's something in a movie, we wouldn't even want to watch it. Can you imagine when they were cutting the blood would be spat? That's what I want. I am Mrs. Herod's wife. I'm a gentle lover. But uh, you become a monster, Herod's wife. Just because somebody made a comment about you, she corrected her and she, she should have said, oh, God, forgive me. So what should I do? Should I leave him? And Herod would have said, no, I don't want you to leave me. Then she would come back and say, he says, I, he, I can't leave. It's not my fault. Our man, he doesn't want me to leave. Lift your hands. Pray in a moment as we close the service. Father, thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your power. Thank you for saving us from turning into monsters. By giving us a spirit of thankfulness for everything. Thank you that you speak to us as children. As you speak to children. And Lord, because you speak to us as you speak to children, we are different from those who you are silent towards. Thank you for your voice. Your beautiful voice. Your voice that is leading us. Your voice that is sometimes sounding hard. Sometimes sounding harsh. Sometimes sounds even bitter. But it's your voice as you lead us in the right way. We give you thanks, Jesus. We give you praise. And now we lift our hands and we say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for our words, the words we've spoken against those who correct and against correction. Our bitterness, Lord, our anger and our outbursts. Save us. Have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from all evil through the blood of Jesus. We are thanking you, Jesus, for the blessing that is released upon our lives today. Now lay your hands on your head. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus of the curse that comes from rejecting your father. And the curse that comes from rebuking back your father. And the curse that comes from insulting and hating the father and the hand that once corrected you and that corrected you. In the name of Jesus, be healed of it. Be cleansed in your soul. Be cleansed in your soul. Be cleansed in you. Every evil that was developing in you, coming into you because you couldn't stand just a correction and a guidance or a re-guidance or a second speaking or a public speaking about something. The Lord healed you. And the Lord cleansed your spirit. Put your hand on your belly. The Lord cleanse your inward parts. Your inward man. Your, the Lord cleanse you of hatred. Of anger. Of bitterness. Of, of rejection. Of a word that came from a father or an authority figure in your life. Father, thank you. Thank you for giving us a sweet spirit. A sweet spirit. A sweet spirit. We lift our hands now to you and thank you for a sweet spirit. Lift your holy hands. Thank God for a sweet spirit. A blessed inward man. A good personality. A thankful human being. A person who gives glory to God and is thankful every day. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. But this is the will of Christ Jesus concerning you. Father, thank you for perfection. I pray for all your children today. Perfection comes, Lord. Improvement comes for every one of the children, Lord. No one here, Lord, will ever be called somebody who would not receive correction. It cannot happen, Lord. It's impossible. But your children are beautiful before you because they will remain children for as long as they live. Thank you. Lift your hand and say, Lord, as long as I live, as long as I live, may I be your child and may I be a child. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks. 
and we give you praise. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, as every head is bowed and every eye closed, before we sit down for a moment, if you are here, you haven't given your life to God, to Jesus Christ. Lift up your hand. If, if you, I don't know, maybe somebody invited you, but you haven't given your life to Jesus. Lift your hand. I want to pray for you and with you. Lift your right hand like this. Like this. Pastor, pray with me. I want to give my life to God. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, you want to give your life to Jesus, you've lifted your hand. Come to me. Come, come from wherever you are and come all the way. Just walk from where you are with your hand like this. Yes. Be thankful that I'm giving you this invitation. I'm offering you an opportunity to come to God. I'm, 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 I'm extending a hand to you and I'm saying, come to Jesus. Come to God. Come. Walk quickly. Come, come quickly. Running. Come running. Come running. Come running. Come running to that mercy seat where Jesus is calling. His grace will be your covering. His blood will flow freely. It will provide your healing. Come running to that mercy seat. Come on. Oh, come, come on. on. Come running. Come running. Come running to that mercy seat where Jesus is calling. His grace will be your covering and his blood will walk freely. All right. It will those of you in front here, lift your hands and say this prayer with me. Close your eyes and pray from your heart. Say, Jesus, I can't hear you. Say, Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. I give my life to Jesus Christ. Please write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus. I am a sinner. Please wash my sins away. With the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive Jesus. As my savior. And my Lord. Today. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Hey. Thank you for watching. The First Love Church YouTube channel. Now if you enjoyed watching that message. Take a minute. Click the subscribe button on your screen. And that way, you won't miss another message. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.